Hello everybody, welcome back to the Peterson Automotive Museum Deep Dive. This time we're talking about a 1964 Chevrolet El Camino. But not just any El Camino, it's, it's a production car that was seriously modified by somebody whose name you may or may not recognize but who had an influence all out of proportion to the size of the cars that he ultimately designed. We're talking about Harry Bradley, Harry Bentley Bradley, who was born in San Diego, grew up in La Jolla, a nice coastal enclave, and ended up in Los Angeles. Now being in Southern California is one thing, but being in Los Angeles, the heart of car custom culture is something else. And Harry Bradley, always a fan of car customizing and and the proper detailing and modifications of an automobile. When he came up to Los Angeles, he was, he was in his heaven. He got to meet all of his idols, all the people he, he only knew from magazines up to that time, namely George Barris, many others that had a tremendous influence, and not just on him. Well, Harry Bradley went to Pratt College. He went to Pratt Institute uh, where he learned art. He, be, he, be, he became an artist, he became a designer. He honed that, that skill uh, in, in, into something that was, that was more usable uh, ultimately for the career that he chose, which is to be in automotive design. And in the 1950s, there was introduced a kind of vehicle that was half car, half pickup truck. Ford introduced it in 1957, called it the Ranchero. Well, Chevrolet ultimately got around to its own version of the Ranchero in 1959. And soon after that, they downsized it into um, a, a medium-sized vehicle, whereas at one time it was a very large car. Uh, and, and by the time they got to 1964, it had taken on a, a, a very specific look, but not a look that Harry Bradley was especially happy with. And being uh, one, of the, one of the most influential people at General Motors, or soon to be one of the most influential people at General Motors Styling, he said, you know what? I'm gonna take my 1964 Chevrolet El Camino and I'm gonna doll it up the way I like to. Because when I pitched my design to, to the folks at General Motors, they weren't all that excited about it. So I'm gonna make the car exactly how I wanna make the car. I'm gonna show it to them and they're gonna love it. And if he wasn't right, uh, he, was, he was spot on. He, he knew exactly what he was doing. And what he did was so subtle but so effective. He lowered the roof by just a couple of inches and he borrowed from Pontiac a sweeping rear window and the sweeping sail panels and he put them on an El Camino a pickup truck, something that most people associated with just merely working. It was a work vehicle. It was for utility purposes. But here, Harry Bradley is taking it, that car and turning it into something very, very special. Uh, something that was easily customizable and something that he would get back to as soon as he could. Now, after Harry Bradley did that to, to his, his car the first time, he ended up designing for Hot Wheels for Mattel, the first series of Hot Wheels. And if you look at this car, you look at the first series of Hot Wheels, the proportions are so similar. And it's easy to see where the inspiration for the first Hot Wheels came from. It came from Harry Bradley and they were embodied in, in this car. Now, Harry Bradley wasn't just content to leave it alone in 1964, 1966, he came out with another version of it. And subsequent to that, he came out with, pardon me, subsequent to that, he developed the ultimate version of this car called Blind Faith. Now this car is as custom as you can be to the point where he removed the engine from the front relocated it to the rear. In fact, he took an entire sub-assembly from an Oldsmobile Tornado and put it in the back. So it was essentially a mid-engine vehicle because the engine was placed in front of the rear axle. Uh, in front of the car where the engine used to be is a nice uh, space for luggage and small, small items like grocery bags and things like that. The interior embodied everything that Harry 
Bradley thought about organic design and continuity of a particular motif. So if you look at it, it's, it's unlike any other interior of, of any vehicle. It looks completely designed almost from the inside out. Now the use of color in a car is very important, but before Harry Bradley created Blind Faith, nobody had ever used colors quite the way he did because we've got a car that's white on one side, black on the other, with a division down the center line of the entire vehicle, even to the back uh, where the tailgate is. Looks like two different cars, and that's what Harry Bradley wanted. He wanted to look at one side and think dark, maybe a little bit sinister, look on the other side and see a white car, maybe something a little bit, a little bit lighter, a little bit more jovial. But it was something that spoke to both aspects of one's personality. And the color didn't stop there because the orange color that he used inside, he also brought outside, and not just for what you would expect, little trim details on the bumper, on the side of the car, but he even embodied the color in the wheel treads themselves by taking a color band of special rubber, cutting out in, along the circumference of the tire a, a ridge to embed the color band, and, and uh, ended up with tires that um, actually are an integral part of the vehicle. In fact, it would be tough to imagine Harry Bradley's blind faith without them. Thank you for joining us on the Peterson Automotive Museum deep dive into Harry Bentley Bradley's blind faith El Camino.